Hi, it's Tanya Vos again and in this video I'm going to explain what the TestStar tool can test actually out of the box. So we've seen in a previous video that we can do automated testing with TestStar at the graphical user interface and it is scriptless and it departs from random testing so we can immediately start testing without any requirements. So this was the test star loop, just to remind you, we get the state, we check whether the state is correct. If we find a failure, we have a test sequence leading to failure. If not, and we want to go on testing, we derive actions in that specific state, we select one of those actions at random, we execute it and we go to the next state. That can again be checked for failures and if there's no failures, we can go on in the loop of derive actions, select action, execute, get state, check state, etc. So in this way, we can start automated testing immediately. There is no scripts, it's random tests, and we have no maintenance since the widgets that you select actually depend on the current state of the application, which is obtained by the widget tree. So we will always find the action that we have selected. So the last question of the previous video was, but what are you then exactly testing? So when we test this way at random, what we are doing is robustness testing. Yeah, we hook up the tool out of the box, random, with minimal setup, we do robustness testing, monkey testing if you want. We can just find if your application is robust and doesn't have any failures. Like for example, this one. PowerPoint has stopped working. This is something that you can detect automatically and for free out of the box. Because this is kind of an implicit requirement leads, that leads to an implicit oracle that needs to be uh, considered incorrect for any type of application. So this way we can find all kinds of crashes and hangs in application. Application that just quit because it crashed or applications that hang and are not responding. Other things that we can find out of the box is oracles for suspicious titles and output. So for example, any output on your screen that contains the words exception, error, problem or things that you don't want your client to see, we can find them automatically through the suspicious titles that we can specify with the regular expression. In the test star dialog there's a way to do that. In the oracle step there is a, 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 a text field where we can put regular expressions that we want to match with suspicious titles. So here we see, for example, error and exceptions, but you can add your own things. And this makes sure that all these type of, of windows and all these type of failures that pop up when you run the system can be found. So only random testing, only implicit requirements. Is that any good in testing? What actually happens when I test this with a real system? So we have done this in a couple of companies. And the first company was a Spanish company here over in Alicante. And this company had developed an ERP system, an enterprise resource planning system, written in Visual Basic with Microsoft SQL database server and targets the, uh, the Windows operating system. Their client pool basically consists of companies in the Valencian region. So when we actually use Testar out of the box, random testing and implicit oracles, on this system under test, we had the results that you can see here. It took us like 26 hours to set it up, to prepare the, the test environment of the system under test to make sure that TestStar could work with it. Then we could do 91 hours of unattended testing. After the testing we needed to do an additional one and a half hour of post-testing to find out what was exactly going on and what were the failures that we had found. And we found 10 critical faults that had not been there found before by the company through their traditional testing methods uh, in the processes. So this was a very good result. And since we were so excited about this result, we did it again at another company. And this was Softteam Company, a French and large company that was using a, a web GUI that programmed a back-end system for virtualization. And here in this company, we could re-inject existing faults such that we could not only uh, measure the faults that we could find in the system, but we could actually also 
measure the FDR, the fault detection rate, by seeing how many faults have we found and how many faults have we re-injected. So the results are on this slide. We can see that for preparation the test star setup costed more or less the same amount of time as the manual setup they had in place already. We could do 70-70 hours of unattending automated testing uh, compared to one hour of manual testing at the company. Afterwards, post-testing costed three and a half hours for test star and two hours for their tests. And we could see that the full detection rate was 61 with test star and 83 with their manual tests. Now, obviously 61 is lower than 83, but we have to take into account that this is out of the box random testing with implicit oracles. And then 61% of full detection rate is not so bad at all. And we can imagine that if we put a little bit in effort in customizing the tool towards the user requirements, we can immediately uh, think of beating this 83% of their manual test suite. For code coverage the same, we had 70% of code coverage compared to 86% of code coverage for the manual test suite. And again, considering implicit oracles only and random testing only, this is quite a positive result. So, we did it again at another company in the Netherlands. This is a Dutch cooperation between Capgemini and ProRail and they have also a web GUI for managing the assignments of the train platforms of the ProRail company. We see similar results of the preparation. Setting up test star costed 44 hours and the manual test suite was more or less estimated to have costed 43 hours to set up. Testing hours of automated testing with test star was 51 while manual 6 hours. Post-testing five hours of investigating what did we actually find with test star compared to two hours here. And here we found four critical errors that their manual test suite did not find. So this is a very impressive result. And what's even more impressive is that we beat the fun functional coverage criteria for the tests. With test star we covered 80% of the functionalities, while with their manual test suite they only covered 73%. So these were quite impressive results. So you might think, I'm impressed too. So you might already feel like adding more oracles and actually configuring the tool towards testing your specific requirements. This we're going to discuss in other videos on the Testar tool within the Testamat project.